Hey everyone, here we are, equipment tour number two. Got the shed door open. Was able to open this one by hand this time, so that's pretty cool. Um, got snow the other day, so, and then it froze the last couple of nights, so I was kind of thinking maybe the door was froze down, but anyway, here we go, equipment tour number two. So, <clears throat> Please excuse the mess. Normally I tried my best to keep everything clean, but the sparrows really did a number on everything this winter. <coughs> <coughs> so up first here we got a an 83H Picker Husker. Um, this is like one of the first few Oliver implements that I bought, um, you know, in my early stages of collecting. I only had a few tractors and then uh, I had changed jobs and then a new co-worker of mine at the time pointed out an auction with a bunch of Oliver stuff on it. So this is one of them that got brought home that time around and it's actually a pretty nice picker. Um, I don't know, if I'd have to guesstimate I'd say it was fairly low use. I think it has the original tires on it, yet the paint is actually in pretty good shape. Other than, you know, a little bit of it got wrecked when I had a, a peacock. He always liked to get in this barn. <clears throat> and, uh, well, you know, do what birds do, obviously. But kind of curious to see, kind of figure out what's worse, the sparrows or the peacock. I guess the jury's out yet. <clears throat> Okay, up next, this got a, a Deutz riding mower. This is one of them that the deck hangs out the front. Hydrostatic, actually a pretty nice mower. Almost like having a zero turn, but not quite. And then this back pan, you know, you can actually make a little steak pocket bed and it does dump. I got another one out back that actually has the dump box on it that I'd like to get running and, and working, but we'll see. <clears throat> um, tiller is just a row to hoe tiller. This actually belongs to my dad. It's pretty, kind of a pretty neat unit. Um, the cool thing about this is I th they actually call it a four season power unit, I think. Yeah, and then what that is is it's got the tiller on it right now, but that tiller actually comes off and you can put a snow blower on the front of it. So another one of them cool things from back in the day where it's you know just one engine to maintain, but it's something that does multiple things. <clears throat> Up next, uh, a white GT1650 Yard Boss. I actually have a rear tine tiller on this one too. <clears throat> Pretty nice unit. Um, I actually got this on a trade. Uh, we'll, actually, we'll get more into that later once we get a little further down the line. <clears throat> Um, the guy I got it from kind of really put in a bit of effort to uh, make sure it was all original and good condition. Um, still has the muffler guard on it. The dash, I think, was redone at one point. It was all cracked. Um, I know it kind of doesn't mean much when I say a real nice one when it's covered in dirt and bird crap, but... You know, a guy can only do so much. And unfortunately this one I haven't had out for a couple of years, so I really need to get it out and running and use it again. I got a mower deck for it too, so maybe I get it get it going and cut the grass with it a couple of times or something. <clears throat> okay, let's see that I get crawled over here everything without falling on my tail. <laughs> um so uh, next there, that is a 83S with the picker sheller. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. Mm. That I can't get that cleared out. Ah. 
Um, haven't really used this one in the field just because for how I have to store my corn, I can't really store it shelled. But what I do use this for is I'll bring it out in springtime and we'll use it like a stationary shelling unit. I know it sounds kind of silly, but hey, it's one way to put it to use. <clears throat> Whoa. Too bad I didn't get that on camera. A doggone rabbit just ran right past my foot. The dogs are flushing them out. They really go nuts for chasing rabbits. Anyway, <clears throat> next one here. GT1655 white red stripe. Got a mower deck on it. This one I got not running last year. Would like to get this up and going this year and, you know, use it to cut the grass and whatnot. Pretty flashy unit with that chrome grill and the red stripe. Um, everything's pretty straight on it. It was complete. I can't remember. I think this one I have to repair one of the brackets for the seat. Not sure. I bought like four of them in one shot and they all various conditions. So I can't remember always which one's which. <clears throat> Here we got a Oliver model 18 pull type. Um, needs quite a bit of work. I actually pulled this one home from quite a ways away. Um, you know, I've this 80, the, the 83 S picker that came from, what was it? Sacred Heart, I think. And I can't remember, you know, going to speed limit to get to there is about an hour and a half. <clears throat> this one, I think just, you know, going to speed limit in a vehicle took me three hours to get to where this one is. And I pulled her all the way home at about 20 miles an hour or so. Um, I've done multiple implements where they don't fit on a trailer and I pull them home. I just <clears throat> go through and take the bearing caps off and get them drilled for a zerk <clears throat> and grease, grease the hubs real well. And so far that hasn't steered me wrong yet. Usually take a handful of spare tires with too. Um, the funny thing, like that picker sheller, I made it within 15 minutes of home and finally one of the original tires blew out. And the funny thing about that was is uh, the tire actually started launching pieces of tread like when I was a mile off the guy's driveway, but it made it almost all the way home. And then this uh, pull type combine that uh, I didn't even make it 10 minutes away and I blew that tire, but then swapped on one of my spares and made it the rest of the way. <clears throat> um, so here we got a white LGT 1655, a LGT 1110, and an LGT 1610. Uh, these were all, actually that was five these came along with the six, the GT1655 red stripe. Um, there was actually five of them total that I had bought that time. All in various conditions. Motors are loose on all of them. Let's see if I can... They have to bear with me a little bit. It's just tough to get curled over everything. I got it all packed in pretty tight. Um... This one here is a GT1000. The GT1000 seemed to be a very, like, I don't know, uncommon low production model. I don't know, most of them seem to be uncommon. But uh, I actually bought this one at a swap meet. I had seen it, was actually contemplating not buying it until my ag teacher from school came up and told me and says, the only other one I only other GT1000 I've seen is the one that he had in his shed at home. So he goes, only I've only seen two of them. You better buy that. So I bought it. <clears throat> um, needed some work. The rear end had a hole in it, and uh, 
I can't remember. I came across another one that I bought for parts that had the same rear end, but I had to swap the axle housings around. But this one too needs a little carb work. Has a mower deck for it. Um, I need to fix one of the brackets, but hopefully can cut the grass with that one someday too. And, you know, side note that my egg teacher, I actually ended up buying his GT1000 from him. So I did have a pair of them for a while. And then the fella who had that 1655 with the tiller that was up front, he got a hold of me and, you know, we talked out a trade. So that's how I come by with that. It was pretty neat having a pair of something that hardly anybody has, but at the same time, it was nice to have that other one. Now on to the big boy here. So this is Oliver 2655 four wheel drive. But if you're real good with 2655s, you'll know that they are powered by a 585 Minneapolis Moline engine. This one is not. This was a repower. It's got a 671 two stroke Detroit non-turbo. I did I don't really know the full backstory on it, but when I bought this tractor and got got it home and whatnot, I kind of looked at it the one time and it's like, you know, I've seen that before. And here, uh, you know, Oliver Schaefer actually had it for sale at one point in time. But the thing with this one <clears throat> is it was actually the guy who I bought it from lived in Germany. So this thing was actually supposed to get stuffed into a container and shipped over to Germany. But um, where I ended up getting it from was a welding shop down in Iowa. And uh, the guy said he had shipped this fella in Germany how many tractors, and then this was the last one, and he said no more. So it was time to sell it. and. Got her bought up and got her had a guy haul it home for me. Needs some fixing, mainly. Well, the gas, the fuel tank needs to be cleaned, and the, the cables to run the hydraulics and three point and all that needs to be fixed up. But she, I put a new had to put a new starter, but she starts up good, runs good. I've used it for just pulling stumps out here and there when we were cleaning up the grove. Going to be a real nice tractor. <clears throat> okay, up next, a 74H mounted Picker Husker. Um, this came from, if you remember from my last equipment tour, the mount, the pipe mount corn planter. This came from the same farm. Um, I actually, I think I had mentioned in that video, I bought quite a bit of stuff from that guy. Real, real nice fella to, um, he actually hauled the tractor. This was still mounted on an 88 yet. Pardon the noise. And he hauled the tractor up here one day, I don't know, summer sometime. And we unloaded the tractor and took the picker off and put the tractor back on. And that was that. And uh, let me tell you, I have a uh, newfound appreciation for the guys that took this, these mounted pickers on and off every year. I mean, that was a chore. And hopefully putting it back on a tractor won't be the worst, but I got a Super 88 diesel that I plan on putting it on. But it needs some work before I put it on because I don't really plan on taken that on and off a lot um, one thing I think not a hundred percent sure on this but this should be an early one because the snoots on it and the tin work for the head is it's galvanized um, most of the ones I've seen are always painted white so I don't know if that was an early limited time thing or not um, I don't know pretty neat though I can't wait to get it on and use it It'll be be nice for using it for opening up the field. 
instead of you know running stuff over <clears throat> Okay, and then here we got a Oliver OC46 crawler loader. This came out of northern Wisconsin. Um, yeah, that was an all-day affair. Drive up, looked at it, loaded it up, and hauled it back. And that was back when diesel fuel was like $4 a gallon. <clears throat> that was ex expensive just in fuel alone, but three-cylinder gas engine. I planned on using this thing right away when I got it. Um, I went through and changed the fluids, put all new hydraulic hoses on it, and tried to fix as uh, you know most of the leaks as possible. And then came down to it, and the hydraulic reservoir had a crack in it, so that's got to get taken off and welded again at some point. And um, there's something with the tracks going on too. I can't remember what, but there's some stuff all in there needs to get fixed and then uh it's kind of a johnny cash machine like like most of these little crawlers it's had a lot of stuff swapped out on it but still a nice little machine just needs some work to be really usable um the one downfall too is the the, count, the counterweights off the back end are missing Okay, and then uh, I suppose there's some other stuff on the side yet too, but uh, Oliver 430 Combine with a Melro grain pickup on it. Um, nice machine too. Ended up needing a few bearings, some belts, and there's a few things that, I mean, it works good, but no, it needs some more fixing. I know this last year when I used it, there was some stuff wrong with it that I actually forgot about. So hopefully get that all squared away for this year. I'll have to get it out and whatnot. Get her fixed up. Otherwise it works pretty good. Usually no, not too much issues with it. You know, I not like I use it a whole lot. So it's not a big deal. But I think the chafer pan's got a hole in it, so you don't really, that's not a good thing. <clears throat> and I don't know, here we just got some miscellaneous riding mowers, little Toro thing that should really go away. And this Montgomery Ward that I picked up off a scrap pile and actually got it running, used it to cut the grass for a while. And then I ended up swapping in a 17 and a half horse two cylinder and then I don't know, put these little chrome pipes on it. I mean, that really made her a grass cutter once I put in that bigger engine. The original was like 11 horse and second gear was about all she could handle. And now with that twin cylinder, um, it, you can't drive fast enough. Barely bogs the engine down. <clears throat> So that's that. That's all for this shed. Um, yeah, there's equipment tour number two is done. Stay tuned, I suppose, a couple of weeks or so, and then I'll do the other one. Thanks for watching.